Okay guys, welcome to Atomic Physics. Um, today we're going to be talking about the structure of the atom, uh, atomic notation, this sort of stuff, and the very brief discussion of isotopes. So hopefully by now you've done some Year 9 and uh, Year 10 science and you've seen something to do with the structure of the atom. We're not talking about the structure of the nucleus just yet, the whole atom itself. So in terms of atomic structure we have some protons and some neutrons in the nucleus and we have electrons in orbits around the outside. So here I've drawn uh, helium. Helium is number two, it's got two protons. Its mass number is four because it's got two plus two protons and neutrons. And this one here is not charged at all because it's also balanced out with two electrons. So we're talking about atomic structure in terms of um, where the uh, protons are placed. Well, sorry, not where, they're always in the nucleus. But um, this proton and neutron relationship and also the electrons, I guess, running around the outside because we're talking about the entire atom. We're not talking about just the nucleus. Um, so when we're looking at different, um, different elements, so here's our periodic table, the rough shape, very, very rough shape. Uh, when we're talking about the periodic table, we've got different places for different things. All of these things are arranged in a specific way, and that way is based on uh, how many um, protons they each have. If you get something like hydrogen, which has got one proton, no neutrons in this form, um, and add just one proton to it, all of a sudden you've got something totally different. If we add another uh, proton to it, we end up with lithium, which is number three, and that's actually a soft powdery grey metal. So we go from a super flammable gas to one that makes your voice go funny and is also actually a noble gas to something that's a powdery metal. Then we add another metal, uh, sorry, another proton, we get something different and different and different and different and different. And all these things have slightly different different structures because these protons here um, and these neutrons here are arranged in very specific ways and so are the electrons floating around the outside. So these electrons are held together because there's an electrostatic force. Um, the protons are held together um, with each other. Uh, they're actually overcoming the electrostatic force because there's another one involved called the nucleon force. We'll get to that a little bit later. In terms of atomic notation, um, here we have a general form where um, X is the symbol, not the letter. There's no, um, nothing on here with um, an X, oh sorry, there's something with an X in it, but Xenon, that's also got an E in it. Um, so X is the symbol, I probably could have written it there. A is the, um, the mass number, which is protons and neutrons added together. We consider a proton or a neutron to have a mass of one and electrons to have a mass of absolutely zero. Um, the Z is our atomic number, um, which is the number of um, just protons. And N is our neutron number, which is just the uh, number of neutrons. I'm hoping that I've actually got that around the right way. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I have. Um, anyway, so when we're talking about um, uh, different uh, chemical elements, so different elements over here. We can have the different number of protons, but then they're different elements. But we can always have different number of neutrons. If we have different neutrons, we can also have different mass numbers. So a really quick example, we can have carbon, which has um, uh, an atomic number of six, because it's number six, got six protons, and a mass number of 12. In this case here, it would have um, an N value of six, Z value of six, because it's got six protons, six neutrons. We also have carbon 13. This one here has a neutron number of seven because it's got to have, you know, it's still got to have six protons, but now it's got, you know, mass number of 13, so it must have uh, seven neutrons to make up the balance. We also have carbon 14, um, very rarely carbon 15, and so on and so on and so on. So all of these things are the same. Um, your body uh, ingests and whatever, uh, carbon, breathe in, carbon, carbon dioxide, um, breathe out, carbon dioxide as well. Uh, everything you eat, plant-based, carbohydrates, carbon. Um, you're taking in some of this and some of this and probably some of this as well. Your body can't chemically filter these out. Um, so these are chemically identical. So it doesn't matter what you do in terms of chemistry, you can't split this and this and this up. They're different masses, not different chemistry. So um, we can put them in a centrifuge, we can sort of filter them out using their different masses, yay physics, um, but we can't change them 
um, chemically blue chemistry. All right, so these things are called um, isotopes. Lithium's not anymore. These are isotopes because they have uh, the same number of protons, but they have different numbers of neutrons. They are chemically identical, which means that if you breathe in radioactive carbon, your body can't deal with it. You just have to wait to expel that radioactive carbon. Um, and uh, sometimes this is actually useful. Don't don't worry. It's actually a very useful process uh, quite often. Um, they have yeah the same number of protons because they're the same element. They have different number of neutrons because they're slightly different versions of the same element. Um, we call them isotopes. Chemically identical, physically different, um, and they all have a set place up here. Okay.